Hello all. Today I am going to discuss Ericsson uh, 4G optimization as the parameter level. Okay. Let's say you are going to attend a, any interview and the interviewer asks the question to you, tell me the some parameters which can help to improve the accessibility KPI. So might be you are in trouble to remember all the parameters uh, which can help to improve the accessibility KPI. In this video, I will discuss more than 15 parameters which can help to improve your accessibility KPI. And also, if you watch this video, you can uh, you have the multiple questions of the answers like how to optimize the accessibility KPI in 4G in terms of the erection only. Okay. And how to control blocking in 4G. How to reduce the load or the traffic on cells how to increase decrease the coverage of the cells how to control a high number of users if it is comes due to the any event like fair or some gathering and how to implement a high cap setting like what are the parameters which can help for the high cap implement setting next how to control afr if it is due to high sr users or the CQI users and next one is how to control access failure due to high latency so there are so many questions which you can get the answers also after watching this video you are able to optimize your 4G accessibility KPI in erection so this video is very very important so let's discuss one by one every parameters which have the answers of these many questions okay so first parameter is qrx level min so this is the minimum received reference symbol received power rsrp for cell reselection okay this attribute is broadcast in sib1 and this range is minus 140 to minus 44 dbm and a default value i am using that is minus 124 dbm so what does mean this parameter and how it works in network okay so let's say you have the default value minus 124 dbm for qrx level min in your network and you feel that users are high in your particular cell and you want to exclude some of the users so if you set the qrx level min from minus 124 or whatever the value is defined your network to the higher side like like minus 124 to minus 120 okay so it means whatever the users or whatever the uv who are getting the rsrp level of better than minus 120 they only can access to the network otherwise they cannot access to that particular set might be they can last to different neighbor cells so this way we can exclude some of the boundary cells users uh, from own cells so we can reduce our uh, users so this is the one parameters if we reduce the users might be uh, our accessibility is degrading due to the high number of users and if you are reducing the user by changing the qrx level min then maybe we can improve our accessibility kpi okay so this one uh, one this one is the first parameter now talk about the second parameter this is the crs gain this is the second parameter so this is the downlink power of the cell specific reference signal okay it range is minus 300 or minus 3 db you can say minus 200 or minus 2 db 100 0 177 300 477 and 600 so it range is minus 300 to 600 db and a default value is 0 db okay so if we want to increase our coverage or uh, decrease our coverage then we can change the crs gain let's say it default value is zero in our network and if you feel users are high in your particular cell and you want to exclude some of the users so you can change this crs gain value from zero to minus three or minus two like that so if you change minus three so what will happen let's say this is the cell and it is serving uh, serving uh, this much area okay let's say this is the area the cell 
and this is serving this much area. Now, if you are changing CRS gain from 0 to minus 3 dB, its coverage will be reduced. Its coverage will go up to here only. So, this way you are excluding some of the users who are in the boundary cells. So, you can reduce your, uh, reduce your users or you can say we can reduce our coverage to improve our accessibility KPI or to uh, reduce some of the users over the cell. And if you want to increase the coverage, like if you feel some of the users uh, want to access your network, but they are not able to access because of the poor coverage. So in this case, you have to improve, increase the CRS gain from 0 to 3 dB or 0 to 1.77 dB or 4.77 dB or the 6 dB. By changing this parameter, you can increase your coverage and you can increase your number of users or you can provide the better coverage to the users who are in the boundary cells though so they are able to make the call or make the uh, or connect the network. So this way we can improve our performance of the network. So this is the second parameter. Now talking about the third parameter, that parameter name is cell reselection priority. Okay, this is very important parameter. This is also called in short form CRP, cell reselection priority. So it ranges from 0 to 7. So let's say we have four, uh, four or five bands in our LTE network. So every bands have own priority. So whatever the band have the higher bandwidth or the capacity layer, that band have always the higher priority. And the coverage layer band have always the lower priority. So higher means 7. Whatever the band have, the, uh, we have to give the higher priority, we will give the 7. If we want to give the lower priority, we can go for the 0, 1, something like that. So let's say we have the four bands. One band priority is 7, one is 6, and another one is uh, 5, okay? And next one is 4, like that. Just I'm assuming this is example. And if I feel wherever we are giving the 7 cell selection priority that carrying the more number of users and due to the more number of users, access failures are very high. So if we change that cell selection priority from 7 to 6, so that our users will latch parallelly with this cell where 6 priority already given and uh, this cell parallelly. So we can reduce some of the users this way. Okay. So also we can change the cell selection priority like it is the 7, if you want we can make it 5. So whenever a cell want to latch to the network, it will access to, it will access or it will latch to the network where we have the higher priority like wherever we have the 6th one. So we can move our traffic from uh, one, one band to other bands this way or we can reduce some of the users from one frequency band to uh, another frequency band. So this is the third parameter. Now moving for the next parameter that is also very important. That parameter name is DL power ratio. So this is the downlink output power. It ranges from 10 to 100 percent. It goes in the percentage. So when, whenever you log into your network, you can see this parameter. If you run the command get space dot DL power ratio in the Ericsson system then you can see this parameter value in your network might be it will define by default it is 100 okay so if it if it is defined 100 and if you feel users are very high in your cell and you want to reduce the users then you have to change the dl power ratio means you have to reduce the downlink power from 100 to 90 or again in the next step you can go for the 80 or in the next step you are can go for the 70 so you are reducing the downlink power in the term of the percentage. So once you reduce the downlink power ratio, you can uh, you can uh, reduce some of the users. So this one is the one more parameter which can help to improve your accessibility KPI. Now, moving towards this is very very important parameter number of PUCCH SR users. Okay. So whenever uh, you are checking the accessibility KPI, you have to check the counter as well. And in the counter, if you feel your access failures are very high due to the number of SR users, then you have to increase the capacity uh, for that particular cell. So capacity, we can uh, we can say increase the capacity or we can uh, say the high cap setting parameters this 
this one as well okay so how we can do that firstly we have to check uh, the baseband which baseband we are using see this num number of pucch sr user this is the range 0 to 4000 but it is depends on the baseband whatever the baseband you are using let's say uh, some people are working in uh, baseband uh, 6000 series or the 5000 series or du uh, 20 du 40 like that so every equipment have own capacity or own license based on that only it can support the user so firstly you have to check whatever the base baseband you are using uh, using what is the capacity of that particular baseband based on that you can increase this high cap setting parameter so let's say for me whatever the baseband i am using it have it have the capacity up to 1280 users so when i log into the network and i see its parameter value is 640 then i see my baseband support 1280 users so, uh, so that i can change this parameter from 640 to 1280 in the frequency division duplex in the fdd fdd band okay so this is this is the number of PUCCH SR user what is the benefit and what is the drawback of uh, this parameter so the higher you set the more ULPRB will be reserved for the signaling okay so whenever you are uh, you are uh, initiating the calls we need uh, higher uplink PRBs to for the signaling purpose so if we are increasing this one hence your throughput will be lower okay so if you are increasing 640 to 1280 throughput will be degraded in this case but if you set it to low means 640 or bit lower than that you will get rrc connection reject and new users will not be able to get or allocated pucch resources so new user cannot access to the network so this will be the problems so it is important like uh, our importance is to give the more user to access or uh, to receive the high throughput depends on your choice so sometimes if there is any event or any uh, gathering fair is ongoing then at that time i think our accessibility is very important in that case you have to change this number of pucch sr users okay same way you can change the another parameter that name is number of pucch cqi users this parameter if your uh, failures are uh, users are high and access failures are due to the cqi users then in that case you have to change the number of PUCCS CQI users in the same manner earlier you change this parameter PUCCS SR users so this range is also 0 to 4000 and it again depends on the baseband capacity so you have to check the baseband capacity and you have to increase number of CQI users as well okay so this was about the FDD let's say you have the TDD network as well and you want to uh, implement the high cap setting like number of PUCCH or uh, CQI users or SR users then you can implement those settings in the TDD layer as well but we have to keep in mind some other parameters parallelly like in the, the TDD key in the TDD high cap setting we have to first change the common SR periodicity and common CQI periodicity what is this so in FDD we have the different frequency for the uplink and downlink but in TDD we have the same frequency but it will change with the uh, with the uh, time so here we, we uh, whenever we want to increase the SR user or the CQI users we have to change the periodicity first after that only we can uh, change the number of PUCCH SR users or number of PUCCH CQI users so as per my baseband capacity it belongs to uh, it can support up to 640 users and i when i see it have the defined value is 320 so i change from 320 to 640 and for the same cqi users as well and for the sr periodicity i see it uh, it ranges 5 to uh, it ranges 5 10 or 20 milliseconds so in my network the default value is let's say 10 so if we want to increase the number of users so we can increase the sr periodicity c as well from 10 to 20 and if it is 5 then we can go for 5 to 10 same way cqi periodicity city periodicity we can increase it ranges 20 40 80 and 160 milliseconds so whatever the defined in your network you can upgrade plus next one next step as well okay so these are some parameters for the high cap setting in the tdd layer now talk about, talk about the some more parameters which can help to improve your accessibility kpi so one parameter is tu blocking timer okay this is also very important parameters 
whenever you see your access failure are very high and it is due to the high latency. So in this case, you have to check this parameter and you can uh, tune this parameter value. Okay. To check this parameter, you can run the command get space dot tu blocking timer. Then you can see this parameter. It ranges 50 to 100 and uh, generally you can see by default its parameter value is 200 millisecond in in the network so if you fit if you feel like access failures are high access failure are high due to the high latency then you have to change this parameter let, let let's understand how this parameter can help to improve in this case so t, if you define the tu blocking timer 200 millisecond in this case whenever latency will increase will not allow up to 200 millisecond to the new users but whenever we change this parameter from 200 to 50 it will not allow the new users till 50 millisecond but after 50 millisecond it will allow the new users so in the case users are increasing that particular area or particular cells and we don't want to wait for the 200 millisecond so in this case if you change this parameter we can improve our accessibility KPI so this one is one parameter now these are some more timers which can help to improve accessibility KPI. So these timers are the T300, T301 and T302. To understand about these timers in details, I have the separate video uh, about the LT timers. You have to watch that video so you can understand when this timer will start and when this timer will end and how it, it will work and how it will improve our network performance. So that will be the more understanding. Uh, please watch my that video for the LT timers. I will provide those that video link in this video description as well. Now, I discussed these many parameters. It is more than 15 parameters. Whenever you are going to any interview, if you ask these so many parameters, like how we can improve our accessibility KPI, my interviewer will be impressed to you. And it will be very, very, very beneficial for you. So keep the snapshot of this this uh, window and here you can see all the parameters and the, whatever the value we can change here and uh, how it can help to improve our network so that's all for today thank you for watching my this video and please i request you guys like whenever you are watching my video and if you found it is very valuable for you please at least put your comment or put your like button so that it will reach to more people and it will uh, appreciate me as well like people are watching my videos so that will be great for me Thank you again.